I, I grew older and more rational. <laughs> I thought, you That's know, a matter of what opinion. <laughs> What, what age were you when this rather peculiar thought came to you? Uh, quite early, but then, you know, up until I was maybe seven or eight, I was quite afraid of that. So is it where your interior monologue was in the voice of, of a gruff bear? I thought, I thought that there was a chance <laughs> yeah. that my life was, was a simply a fiction. Did, We've all felt of, that, haven't we? Bit, yeah, but yeah. Not, in, not in a bear society. <laughs> What did the bear look like? Was he like a little cartoony bear or did he look very natural, like a natural bear? He was reading a book, so he didn't look that natural. <laughs> <laughs> it came from a storybook I had, which was called Tell Me Another Story, and it was about a bear reading stories to his little bears. Did you have any, like, relationship with him? Did you converse with him or was he just reading? You can't converse with him. The, the, the the bear, he's in the bear's but world. He's <laughs> very junior to the bear. You can't, you can't I, jump out of the book that is your life and talk to the person reading it, can you? You can't say, why is this happening, bear? No! <laughs> Otherwise, the bear's just going to go, and then, why is this happening, bear, said Frankie Boy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like this bit of the story. Yeah, I'll stop reading it, shall I? No, 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 screamed Frankie Boy. Don't stop reading the story, or it is the end of my life. But this is definitely not suitable for little bears. <laughs> David, time to uh, make a decision. I, well, oh, what do you think, Kelvin? I, I think it's a massive whopper. <laughs> I really want it to be true, so I'm going to say true. I think because I think yeah. it could be. I think it's. I think it's true. It's creative mind. I do think it's true because I. It's a very odd thing for them to have made up. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to go for true? Uh, it's, yeah, I think we're going to go you're for true. true. Oh, okay. You're saying true. So you're wrong. Right. You say that it's true, uh, Frankie. Uh, were you telling the truth? Is a lie. Uh, <laughs> it's a lie. When Frankie was a child, he wasn't scared that his entire life was a book being read by a bear. Uh, a Chinese philosopher once asked me, Am I a man dreaming he's a butterfly, or a butterfly dreaming he's a man? And I replied, Do I get free crackers if my order comes to more than ten pounds? <laughs> Our next round is called The Ring of Truth, in which I read out some amazing celebrity facts, and all our teams have to do is decide whether they're true or not. Uh, David's team, take a look at this. At a terraced house in Ramsgate, a family settle down to watch the television. But the pictures on screen are from a rather special but unusual event. The people here are watching their granny's ashes being blasted into the sky. Her family say she was slightly eccentric with a great sense of humour. It was her stated wish that her ashes be placed in a rocket and blasted heavenwards. This was the event itself. Here we go, here we go. Bye, Granny! <laughs> yes, uh, Granny's gone to a better place, next door's garden. <laughs> Here is the related fact, then, for David's team. Mick Jagger has been asked by a company if they can sell his ashes in collectible egg timers when he dies. <laughs> they offered Mick Jagger, and it seems too good an opportunity to waste. Mick Jagger. They offered... Uh... That's good. They, uh... It's not up there with my Ronnie Corbett. I'm not going to say for a second that it is, but it was worth an airing. But what would Ronnie Corbett sound like if he was singing a Mick Jagger song? Yeah. <laughs> good on. Good on. <laughs> I can't get no satisfaction. <laughs> it was an Australian... Don't try and look like you weren't pleased to be asked. <laughs> All right, on we go. Um, an Australian novelty firm called Trend Connection, they were the ones, they offered Mick Jagger £20 million for his ashes. And the plan was for a share of the profits to go back to Mick Jagger's estate. On top of the £20 million. Oh, oh does he get the £20 million? He gets it now. Now, before yeah. dying. And yes. then they just sort of hang around with some paraffin and... and the, <laughs> uh, uh, well, these things were going to be... They, they asked Jagger's permission to market small portions of his ashes in collectible hourglasses, costing a million dollars each. I mean, I know his dignity has not always been that man's priority. But even for him, it is quite undignified to have your remains spread around the houses of a lot of vulgar millionaires and using it to time their breakfast. <laughs> so, so what are you going to say, then? Uh, what do you think, Kelvin? 
Uh, I think it's so ridiculous, it must be true. Kelvin's been better at the guessing than me, so I think we should go with Kelvin. Um, so we're going to go with true? You're saying it's true. All right. Uh, well, let me tell you this. It is true. <laughs> Mick Jagger has been asked by a company if they can sell his ashes in collectible egg timers when he dies. Actually, Mick doesn't want to be cremated. He wants to decompose naturally, a process Keith Richards started 30 years ago. <laughs> Which means at the end of that round, it's Lee in the lead with three points to two. is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. Uh, this week, each of David's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest, and it's up to Lee's team to spot who's telling the truth. So, please welcome this week's special guest, Terry. <laughs> yes. So, uh, Kelvin, what is Terry to you? Uh, well, this is Terry, and he built the nuclear bunker in my garden. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, David? Uh, this is Terry, and he's the policeman who was called out when I was caught trying to break in through the window of my own flat. <laughs> All right. And Jack? Uh, this is Terry, uh, the mean machine Fraser, and he is teaching me to wrestle. <laughs> right. <laughs> So there we have it. Please, team, where on earth do you begin? Yeah. Kevin, how many people can fit in this bunker? I bet it's just one, you selfish get. <laughs> Sorry, love. <laughs> Four at a push. So, Ke why do you push. feel... <laughs> <laughs> so why do you want one in the first place? It, it's a dangerous world out there, and I, I, want to, I want to be protected, and I want to protect those closest to me. If there's a nuclear war... I don't want to live. Neither do I. I'm with you. I, I don't want to come out of a shelter and try and rebuild society. And find Kelvin no... McKenzie I, I... skipping yeah. around saying I'm in charge. I have no skills. But, I mean, how long? OK, society is destroyed by a nuclear war. How long? In this, basically, we're back to the Bronze Age. How long is it going to be before people start pitching panel shows again? <laughs> it's going to be at least 2,000 years. <laughs> I'd love to see you in a Mad Max type of society as everyone's, as everyone's holding off a biker gang and you're going, I can think of an amusing reason why one of yeah. these four might be the odd one out. Yeah. So, Calvin, there's four people can fit in this bunker. Yep. So, you only have three people in the world that you care about. That is true. So, there's us two, <laughs> and who else? <laughs> Ronnie Corbett. Um... <laughs> We can live for another 20 years at the world's shittest party. <laughs> OK, Jack. And why are you learning how to wrestle? Cos I'm a big wrestling fan. I've always liked wrestling. I went what, what kind of see, wrestling? Uh, like, WWE. Uh, I went WWE? See, WWE, yeah. World Wrestling Entertainment. Oh, I thought it was WWF. See, oh, it's they changed now. They had to change now. it cos the World Wildlife Fund sued them. <laughs> <laughs> that's, not, that's not a joke. That's why they had to change yeah. it. Is that true? Yeah. 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 Do you really like it? Yeah, I do. I saw a man who was like seven foot four in little spandex undies when I felt alive. <laughs> Amazing. How long have you been learning for? Uh, I've done one lesson, but I'm going to do some more. I've done one, one lesson. lesson? It was really good. What are you learning for, though, just because you want to be able to wrestle? Yeah, I want to be a, able right. to wrestle. Who many who studies this as a martial arts? You see all the posters, right? Taekwondo, karate, judo, whatever. I'm going to go and learn how to wrestle like a big pretend American. <laughs> Jack, can you tell us the name of five famous wrestlers? Uh, the Rock, Hulk Hogan, The Hulk Undertaker. Hogan. <laughs> Go on. Uh, uh, Shelton Benjamin. Oh, that's this... not, that's a bloody yeah. solicitor's. No. <laughs> Shelton, Shelton Benjamin? Benjamin is a wrestler. Is he? Don't, yes. Please don't tell me that you've accidentally been represented in law. <laughs> is that what it is? <laughs> All right, David, uh, remind us again. Uh, this is Terry, the policeman, who was called out when I was caught trying to break into the window of my own flat. Do we, do we believe that, Christine? I can believe you were trying to break into your own flat for whatever bizarre reason, but I'm but not to, so sure to about... To live there, to continue to live there. <laughs> I locked myself out when I, I had a plumber round trying to unblock a uh, drain. I and find it difficult to imagine you holding a conversation with a plumber yeah. as he did the job. Did you actually speak to him in your house? Yes. Did you have a glove puppet on? <laughs> I 
little David is very pleased with your work. So, so would you like a cup of tea, so your little genuine, David? Your, your genuine view of me is I would be unable to converse. 